In the world of modern warfare, rocket artillery systems are like the heavy hitters on a sports team. They can strike far-off targets with speed and power, keeping enemy forces at bay while protecting friendly troops. Canada, known for its peacekeeping role in global conflicts, is no stranger to needing strong defense tools. Right now, Canada's army relies on older towed howitzers, like the M777, which are light and easy to move, but slow to set up and vulnerable to enemy drones and missiles. To fix this, the government launched the Long Range Precision Strike Project. It's aiming to buy about 24 multiple rocket launchers that can hit targets over 100 kilometers away. The top choice seems to be the American M142 HIMARS, or High Mobility Artillery Rocket System. Military leaders are pushing hard for it, even with some trade tensions between Canada and the US. But there's a strong rival in the mix. South Korea's K239 Chunmu, made by Hanwha Aerospace. This system is already winning fans worldwide, with big sales to Poland and the Middle East. Canada could pick either, but the decision is expected soon, maybe within months. Let's break down what these systems are and how they stack up. The M142 HIMARS, America's quick shooter. Picture a tough pickup truck that can unleash a storm of rockets from miles away. That's the HIMARS in a nutshell. Built by Lockheed Martin, it's been a game changer for the US military and allies since the early 2000s. It's not a massive tank-like launcher. Instead, it's mounted on a standard 6x6 military truck chassis. This makes it light enough to fly on a C-130 cargo plane, so troops can drop it into hotspots fast. The HIMARS carries one pod at a time with six rockets or a single missile. The basic GMLRS rockets zoom up to 70 to 80 kilometers with pinpoint accuracy. Think GPS-guided arrows that can hit a barn door from across the city. For longer shots, it swaps to the ATAC MS missile, reaching 300 kilometers. That's far enough to strike deep into enemy territory, like hitting a supply depot behind the front lines. A three person crew can fire it in minutes, then shoot and scoot to avoid counterattacks. Reloads take about 15 to 20 minutes with a support truck. Canada likes the HIMARS because it fits perfectly with NATO gear. The Canada's Army already trains with it through U.S. partnerships, and munitions are easy to share. In Ukraine, HIMARS has wrecked Russian ammo dumps and bridges, proving its worth. For Canada, 24 units could cost over $1 billion, including training and parts. It's reliable, battle-tested, and ready to go. The K239 Chenmu, South Korea's versatile powerhouse. Now, imagine a bigger truck that packs twice the punch in one go. The K239 Chunmu, rolled out in 2014, is South Korea's answer to threats from North Korea's massive artillery. Also from Hanwha, it's on an 8x8 truck that's speedy on roads and rough terrain, topping 90 kilometers an hour. Like HIMARS, it can hitch a ride on a C-130, but it's beefier overall. The Chunmu's Edge? It fires two pods at once, double the fun. Each pod holds different ammo, letting crews mix it up on the fly. Options include 20 small 130mm rockets per pod, 40 total, reaching 36 kilometers for close barrages. Six medium 230mm rockets per pod, 12 total, up to 45 to 80 kilometers. Six guided 239mm rockets per pod, 12 total, hitting 80 kilometers with deadly precision. Even ballistic missiles up to 290 kilometers. Like a mini ICBM for deep strikes. This flexibility means one truck can rain down 40 unguided rockets for area coverage or 12 smart ones for surgical hits. Firing is automated via computer with a crew of four. It reloads quicker, under 10 minutes in ideal spots, and has better protection against jams and bad weather. South Korea has over 200 in service and plans buying 288 for their Homar K program, praising its firepower. Hanwha is sweetening the deal for Canada 
with offers to build parts locally, creating jobs. Both systems are wheeled, mobile, and smart, but they shine in different ways. Himars wins on simplicity and integration. Its accuracy has saved lives in real fights, and ammo is plentiful, but it fires less at once, so it might need more trucks for big salvos. Chunmu pulls ahead in raw power and options. Double pods mean twice the rockets without extra vehicles, ideal for overwhelming foes quickly. It's newer with upgrades like better electronics and could save Canada money long term through local production. However, its ammo isn't as widely shared in NATO yet, and it might need tweaks for full compatibility. Both can shoot and scoot to dodge enemy fire, use GPS for hits within meters, and link to drones for spotting targets. Safety-wise, they're tough against electronic jamming. For Canada, Heimers feels like a safe bet with US ties, but Chunmu offers bang for buck and jobs at home. So Canada's push for a new rocket system isn't just about buying gear, it's about staying relevant in a scary world. With Russia flexing in Europe and China eyeing the Pacific, NATO needs every edge. These MRLS would let Canadian brigades in Latvia or on home soil strike hard and fast, supporting allies without risking lives up close. If Canada goes HIMARS, it'll deepen U.S. bonds, despite tariff spats. Picking Chunmu could spark a defense boom with South Korea like Poland's doing. Either way, the $1 billion spend will create skilled jobs and secure ammo supplies key since Ukraine's war drained global stocks. In the end, both systems are top tier, but the choice boils down to needs. Precision teamwork, HIMARS, or versatile volume, Chunmu. As decisions loom, Canada's army is poised to enter the rocket age stronger than ever. This upgrade isn't flashy, but it's smart, ensuring peace through strength.